Hey guys, thanks for tuning us in for this 64th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests for this episode include Masterminds contestants and trivia experts, Muffy and Jonathan. We'll also talk to community advocate and president of New York Central Park South Civic Association, Michael Fisher, as we'll discuss the crisis level homeless epidemic that we're going through leading into the holidays. We'll also talk with host Josh Clark and Chuck Bryant of the podcast Stuff You Should Know and the brand new book that's available as well. Of course, if you would, please take the time to drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and of course, some feedback and share with your friends. A new season of Masterminds is on, and contestants and trivia experts Muffy Morocco and Jonathan Corbin are on talking about the upcoming season. Season number two of Masterminds today is premiering at 4 and 8.30 on the Game Show Network. And from that, we've got Muffy Morocco and Jonathan Korbla, the uh, trivia experts, some of the trivia experts. And first off, uh, Muffy and Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Now, now, Jonathan and, and Muffy, where did uh, where did trivia and, and uh, doing the game shows? Where did that uh, first off? I guess Muffy, I'll ask you first. So, I my first appearance on a game show. I was fifteen years old. I was on Teen Jeopardy. I lost, but <laughs> it uh, kind of kindled the love for it. I just, you know, I'm one of those people. I, I just love knowing things. Got a little bit of a competitive streak, and I've been on a bunch of game shows and turned that into being an expert on masterminds. And Jonathan, for you, I know that uh, you're a chess champion as well. Is d- does that just kind of go hand in hand with the with the uh, I- intense uh, thought process, if you will? Oh yeah, um, both intense trivia and intense chess competition go hand in hand. For me, I started both of them when I was very young. Um, chess at the age of seven, and uh, trivia game shows at the age of twelve. And it's been a long, lifelong pursuit for me, and like I just really love it, you know. Watching shows, being on them, it's amazing. And, um, I think Jonathan has been on like every game show possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jonathan coming into to masterminds, being one of the trivia experts, how much extra pressure do you put on yourself? Well, I can tell you. Um, I, I would say even Muffy can tell you. I put a ton of pressure on myself. I don't just want to look good. I want to sound good, and I want to get those answers right. And I want to make sure I intimidate my opponent because <laughs> not about my trivia. And uh, even if I do great, I want to outdo myself the next time. You know. That's right. Now, now, Muffy, for you, the, uh, the how much do you appreciate Mastermind and kind of the different uh, the, the, the the different uh, theme of the game show as well? Well, you know uh, what I love is I get to compete against Jonathan or Ken Jennings or Lakedra or Ariana or Ryan, the other Masterminds, up until the end, and then it's the contestants are going up against each other. So you're facing the best of those contestants. Uh, I get to try and beat Ken Jennings or Jonathan all the time, which is really satisfying. Because, like I said, I have a competitive streak. Um, and then you get to go head to head with the same questions against that challenger, and you just get to see who knows more. It's just it's a fair contest. Now, Jonathan, is there more uh, smack talk behind the scenes between the other trivia experts, or is it the the contestants themselves? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we are human, and we all are competitive to win. Um, but we do have a family atmosphere, definitely backstage and behind the scenes. We feel like a real team. We're rooting for each other, picking each other up when we get down. But, you know, when the lights are on and when the action starts and when the camera starts rolling, it's cutthroat from that point on. Yeah. And I, th- I, you know, I root for the contestants. I mean, I don't know that anybody roots for us, really, especially not that Ken Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for for you, Muffy, what is uh, what, what's the biggest challenge preparing yourself mentally for for each new episode? You know, part of it is just the energy and the focus because it's you know you, you've got a lot of questions coming at you and you don't want to say something stupid. <laughs> you don't want to be wrong, so I think that you know is taking a minute to breathe and just think and just sort of a lot of times I believe just go with your gut when you you answer trivia questions. And, and Jonathan, if, if if somebody was was had the thought of going on uh, and trying for a trivia show or anything like that, what maybe some uh, some some insight into how they can prepare themselves? Oh, absolutely! I mean, I love the game show preparation process, and you know, beyond a lifetime curiosity and love of answering questions and watching shows, um, definitely there are certain trivia books that I remember picking up on my way to getting better at Jeopardy. 
I would go on this website called Sporkle and do practice tests and quizzes. And that's the kind of way to get your brain better at recalling and remembering things. And that's, way, that's a great way to become sharper on game shows. And, well, and I have to say, if it's, what, whatever show it is, just watch that show, get used to that format, and the more you answer, the more things pop into your head. <laughs> and, and Muffy, what is uh, what is your uh, Achilles heel as far as uh, a, a question category, if you will? Oh, that's a good question. I'm pretty bad at sports, and I'm, I, you know, I'm trying so hard to learn more about like chemistry, science, like the periodic table. Because, you know, you asked me something about, like, hydrogen, and I'm like, yeah, I agree. That's a thing, and I don't know much more beyond that. <laughs> hey, Jonathan, what's, uh, wh- which one is your Achilles? Well, you know, I don't want to get any of the upcoming contestants excited <laughs> by any I might have. So I want to keep them very, very intimidated and tell them in their dreams, do I have any weaknesses? But <laughs> to be humble, like Muffy, I would probably say something like, I don't know, Beethoven or Mozart, perhaps. That's awesome. Now, uh, again, new episodes uh, starting today. How excited are you for for a new season, especially in the midst of what 2020 has been in the first place? Oh, it's a thrill. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we, Muffy and I and Hedra and Ariana and Ken, we, we really have one of the best possible jobs. We get to be on TV, we get to show off our smarts, we get to compete, we get to try our best, and, and, you know, we get paid for it, and we can't ask for a better time, and when the contestants are coming up threatening to take our position, it only motivates us more. And, you know, even though, yes, we sometimes do look bad on TV, we generally look pretty great. So we love it. That's right. Now, Muffy and, and Jonathan, I'm going to give each of you an opportunity if folks want to keep up with and everything. I say, Go I ahead. it's uh, super fun that we, you know, we get to, you know, actually see other humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something to be said for that that's, right that's been a joy <laughs> and, and muffy and jonathan if folks want to keep up with everything social media wise what's uh what's the best way to keep up i'll ask uh, jonathan first well my last name is corbla c-o-r-b-b-l-a-h and uh yeah i'm on all of the social medias on twitch and uh facebook and twitter and uh instagram under just my last name corbla right. and i am Morocco. Uh, which is spelled M-A-R-R-A-C-C-O. But you know what? If you follow GSN, they'll tag us. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Come and find us and, uh, you know, uh, and watch the show. That's right. Yeah, it's for 4 p.m. on Game Show Network. That's right. New episode, season two, premiering today. And uh, Jonathan and Muffy, great to visit with you guys. Hope you guys have a a great uh, opening episode and look forward to hopefully catching up again soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much, Cameron. Up next, we talk with homelessness expert Michael Fisher about the ongoing homelessness epidemic, especially during a pandemic and the holiday season. We're going to talk a little bit about the homelessness epidemic. We've got community advocate, and he's also the president of New York Central Park South Civic Association. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Michael Fisher on the line with us. And first off, Mike, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And, and, you know, with COVID-19, 2020, everything that it's been for so many people, homelessness, I think, is is maybe one of those things that folks uh, haven't thought about. But as we come close to the holiday season, it seems like that's something that uh, that always comes to the forefront, doesn't it? Well, you know, it's uh, with with the craziness of this, this just disasters of a year, a nightmare of a year, I call it. Um, you, know, you have quite a few people that can't pay their rent or make their mortgage payments. And the very sad thing is that a lot of terrible things sometimes go on in people's homes when they can't, when they don't make any money and they can't pay for things. And, you know, eventually they potentially could lose their apartments or their houses and end up on the streets themselves. Uh, And some perhaps, you know, uh, using drugs or or becoming alcoholics. It's a very, very big, strong possibility that that would occur. So it could be a real disaster moving forward. Once, uh, you know, once the government allows a lot of these, you know, landlords to, uh, basically terminate leases and throw people out. And it's a sad situation that could happen throughout the country. And, and Michael, uh, seeing firsthand, what are, what are the, uh, what is the mentality? What is the, uh, the emotional state of mind of, of the folks that you've been in, been in contact with? You mean the, the, uh, the homeless people on the streets? Yes, sir. Or the, just in general? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the new homeless, if you will. 
Well, I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the people that are living on the streets, in fact, the majority of them, uh, not only in New York City, but throughout the United States, um, uh, it is a national crisis, are mentally ill. And a lot of them just don't even know what's going, even going on. They're just in a really uh, uh, tough state of affairs and they just don't know um, what's happening. And, um, so you can't even really communicate with a lot of them. Some of them you can speak to, uh, some of them, you know, there's a gentleman that lives uh, near my apartment. He lives on the street and he's, uh, he's, he's, he has a drug addiction, but you know, you can talk to him a little bit and he's having a very difficult time. He'd love to be able to get off the streets if he could, but there's, unfortunately the the city, you, you would think that with th- $3 billion plus budget that they would have programs designed to actually help people, but they really don't. Uh, what, what they do is they offer these shelters uh, where most most people don't want to go into because they get beat up or they get robbed. So a lot of the people that end up going into these shelters are people that, that are uh, released early released from prison or released from prison. And even they don't like the shelters. They Some of them say that the shelters are worse than the prisons. It's crazy. Can't make it up. And, and Michael, how do you see uh, the what kind of changes need to be made to to see a curb in the homelessness epidemic that we've seen here in the U.S.? Well, I think the, the first thing that needs to happen is politicians. I mean, they completely have no clue about this problem or how to handle it. I mean, in mo- the craziness is is that the majority of these politicians feel that if a homeless person wants to stay on the street, let them stay on the street. And I just think that's an abandonment on their end because a lot of the homeless people are mentally ill. They're not capable of making decisions for themselves. Um, so what, what we should do, number one, is what we should is um, at some point we need to have a summit between the state and federal governments you know, around the country. I and mean, we need to get everybody together because, like I said, it is a, um, it is a national crisis. I mean, you have over 600,000 people plus a, uh, around the country that are homeless. Uh, the biggest problems being in uh, New York and uh, California. Uh, so you need to have a summit to discuss it and come up with some solutions. The second thing is, is that, you know, we need to look at creating modern rehabilitation programs designed to actually help the homeless people. A lot of them you could probably uh, rehabilitate and get them into uh, back into jobs and into affordable housing, help them, you know, kind of lift them off their feet a little bit and help them out. So some of them you'll never be able to really rehabilitate. They have, they're really, uh, you know, they're, they're mentally ill to a point where you, there's just not a lot you can do, but at least get them off the streets and, and put them into these programs. Now, where can you where can you do these things? Well, I mean, there's the federal and state governments own plenty of land. They own plenty of buildings. You have military bases that have been retired. I mean, there's ways that they can do it that's less expensive. Uh, I mean, New York City likes to spend a ton of money, you know, putting um, homeless people into five-star hotels. Uh, they, they like to rent out and buy very expensive buildings in the city to do it. And it becomes very cost prohibitive. And so there's less expensive ways to do it. And there are smart ways to do it. where you are actually going to try to rehabilitate them, um, or at least get them off the streets. Um, but right now, unfortunately, our, you know, the politicians don't really want to get involved with this. They, they just kind of want to let it go. And, uh, you know, like, for example, if, if you're a resident in the city and, you know, you're, there's a wall of homeless people, you know, blocking, you from getting into your building or, uh, you know, restaurant, restaurants, you know, where people can't get in, you know, where they're blocking entrances there and you say something, you know, you get criticized for saying something, but, uh, and, or in the subways, you know, we have subway cars that have become shelters where you have a lot of homeless people. We need to help these people. And right now the, the, you know, the city's approach, our leadership's approach is to abandon them. They think they're doing something. They think they're doing them a favor by letting them sleep in the streets, but they're not doing them a favor. And, you know, it's got to be win-win. I mean, the people that live in the city and the people that, you know, own uh, retail establishments and restaurants, I mean, shouldn't have to deal with that either. It's not the right thing to do. And uh, you got to help them out. You got to help the homeless out. And right now, with the way, how, how bad things are in the city right now, I mean, you have businesses that are going under. You have restaurants that are going under. I mean, these politicians just have absolutely no handle on this whatsoever. It's really a shame. And are there any examples of uh, maybe the the way the homeless have been handled uh, th- that maybe people can look at and maybe um, follow the same example? Uh, maybe some success stories that you've seen. Well, you know, I see that you know there's there are a lot of volunteers. There are, you know there are churches. You know there are different groups that you know that that will go out and and try to help the homeless and try to feed them and. 
you know, I think that that's, that's certainly important. I think that, you know, when people are looking at making contributions and stuff, you know, during the holidays or any time during the year, you should look at making contributions to, you know, these different volunteer organizations that actually help the homeless. I think that's a good thing. And we do have a lot of groups. I mean, I remember uh, very recently there was a woman in a, you know, she was, she's homeless and she's in a wheelchair and I looked at her leg and her leg looked like it needed to be amputated. I'd never seen anything so bad. And uh, there was a volunteer organization that came in. Um, they talked to her. They, cause she didn't want to come off the streets. You know, mm-hmm. she didn't want to get help. And they, they really worked with her and they, they convinced her. And so they were able to put her into a special band and, you know, take her to the hospital. Um, so groups like that, I really feel, you know, definitely go a long way to help the homeless, but it's not enough, you know, until the government gets involved and starts doing the right thing on a, you know, on a global scale in, the, in these cities, it's, it's just not going to be enough, unfortunately. That's right. Now, now, Michael, what uh, what ways can we each, uh, as uh, just as normal, regular, average Joes, what can we do in our everyday life that can make a difference? Well, I think that, uh, number one, I think that people need to vote politicians out. I mean, I think, you know, everybody has the privilege to vote. And for some reason, we somehow reelect the same people over and over and over again that don't that do the same things, you know, where which is ignoring like the homeless crisis and, and some of the other problems that we have. So use your, I would say, number one, use your vote to vote people out of office. Number two, I think people need to get more involved in speaking up to their politicians and letting them know that they're, they're disgruntled. They're not happy with what's going on. I mean, you know, if you're living in a city of San Francisco or Los Angeles or New York city, Seattle, Portland, or some of the other cities where we have, you know, a, just a terrible homeless crisis uh, where People are left to rot in the streets, unfortunately. And I hate to use the word rot, but that's exactly what it is. You know, I think you need to, people need to protest. People need to get together and you know, form large groups of people and, and, you know, go to City Hall and let them know they're unhappy with uh, the fact that they're ignoring the homeless problem. That's what they need to do. They need to speak up. And people don't do that enough. You know, I'm just, look, I'm an ordinary guy. I have a day job. You know, I, I'm not a politician. I'm never going to be a politician, but I do take the time to, to speak up and I take the time to let people know that I'm not happy with what I'm seeing in, in my city. And I, and I feel terrible for the homeless people. Look, I, when I, when I um, walk the streets, I'll go into a store and get, get a homeless person food and coffee, you know, or whatever. I'll do whatever I can to help out, but that's just not enough. We, the politicians need to do a lot more and they can do a lot more. But they, for some reason, they're not. I and mean, you need the public to step up and vote them out of office and put somebody in there who's willing to do something. That's what people need to do. And also meet with your politicians. Let sit down with them. You, know, you can make appointments. You can schedule appointments. You can do it on the. You know, you can do video appointments. You know, where you go on a Microsoft Team video or something and have a conversation with them. Talk to them. Converse with them. Let them know you're not happy with what you're saying. You know what? When you do those kinds of things, you can impact change. Look at the small groups of people around the country that have, uh, you know, they go from city to city and protest and say that they wanted to defund the police. And all of a sudden you have every city saying they're going to defund the police. But just think for a minute, if you had larger groups of people protesting politicians and saying, we're not happy with the fact that you're ignoring the homeless people. I guarantee you we'd have a lot of change. I guarantee you they'd spend more time on trying to help them. I really do. I blame it. On, I don't blame it on politicians. I blame it on people, rep- citizens. That, that are irresponsible and don't take the time to do the right things. That's, there, what I, that's who I blame. There you go. We got, we, we got to point the finger at ourselves first, don't we, Michael? We have to take full responsibility. Absolutely. I know that, look, it's not easy to impact change, but I know that if something bothers me, I'll, you know, I'll go out and I'll state my, my opinion and I'll push until I make the change. You can do, anybody can do that if they really want to. And you don't have to get angry about it or mean about it or attack you know, your politicians. You go in and you, you speak to them. You let them know you're not happy. And, and, you know, if you have a, you know, if you get a community together of, you know, 200 people, 300 people that aren't happy with what's going on, you get together, you meet with the politicians, I guarantee you, you're going to impact change. And I mean, I've been for, for I've been to the capital of Albany in New York, and I've seen, you know, two, 300 people rally in, in these, you know, there at, 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 at um, in the capital. And believe me, I've seen them walk through politicians' offices and, and demand that they see them and make change. And, be, and believe me when I tell you, politicians listen. They will listen at that point. They won't listen if you don't say anything to them. And they certainly won't listen if you vote them in and you don't and you just vote them in. And you don't do anything about it. They'll just ignore you. 
Well, Michael, it has been uh, it's been great to visit with you. Loved uh, delving a little deeper into the epidemic that is homelessness here in the U.S. If if folks uh, would like more information, maybe keep up with uh, with everything you've got going on. Where's the where's the best place they can keep up with you? Uh, it's uh, www.centralparkcivicassociation.com. All right. Well, uh, Michael Fisher, again, great to visit with you and uh, hope you have a great weekend and, and a very happy holiday season as well. Let's uh, let's just say good health and uh, vaccines in, t- in 2021. And wrapping up the show, our host of the podcast, Stuff You Should Know, Josh Clark and Chuck Bryant also have a book of the same name that's available now. They're the hosts of the podcast and, and got a book to boot with the same name, Stuff You Should Know. Josh Clark and Chuck Bryant on the line. And first off, uh, Josh and Chuck, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Thanks thank for you. having us, Cameron. Now, uh, I guess, Chuck, I'm going to ask you first off, when uh, when did the idea for the podcast come up? What And uh, what was what was your initial maybe goals of the podcast when you first started? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, the initial podcast came up uh, sort of 12 plus years ago when we were writers for a website called HowStuffWorks.com. And we were just uh, basically pumping out these informational articles that had a little personality to them. That was sort of what differentiated us from Wikipedia. They were written by real humans in full, well-researched. And our boss came along and said, why don't you guys try this new thing called a podcast? Uh, he actually asked Josh, and Josh had a couple of rotating um, guest host, uh, at first. And then I came in, we had good chemistry. And as far as goals go, we didn't have any, and that's not <laughs> a joke. It, there was not a whole lot of people doing podcasting. There was, it was a side gig for our regular job. I think our boss literally called it low hanging fruit and there was no <laughs> way to fail. And so it was, it was kind of looking back, it was the best way it could have happened because it was zero pressure to achieve early on. Now, now, Josh. Now that uh, that that you guys have the successful podcast, when did the the idea for the book first originate for you guys? Um, basically, week two of the podcast. Um, we've been wanting to do a book from the from the outset. You know, we were both hired as writers, so we kind of came into this from a writer standpoint. And it, it's always just been just this great idea that just has not taken place or hadn't taken place until now. Um, and, you know, we've been thinking about it. We've made a few attempts at, at trying to figure out how to do it. And then finally, it just all kind of came together uh, earlier this year. And I, it's so bizarre to say that we just started working on this this same year because it feels like it was 10, 12 years ago. <laughs> that we on this. But this has been a big year for us in this book. And, and we, we got it done. We worked really hard. We had some really great guidance from a co-writer we worked with named Nils Parker. Um, and our illustrator, Carly Monardo, did just knocked it out of the park and made, just brought the book to life. So the, the fact that we had this great team that we were working with really, really helped things along. And, and, and we're pretty proud of what we came up with. If somebody is, is starting a podcast, what, what is the first thing that, uh, that, that somebody needs to know heading in? Maybe is, is it goals or, or is it maybe a format that you look at first? Uh, you know, I think format is pretty good to look at early on, uh, after you hopefully start a podcast, that's something that you care about. Uh, the, the three pieces of advice we always give are to make it sound good from the beginning, especially these days, no one's going to listen to 30, sep- uh, 30 seconds of a podcast that sound has poor sound quality. So you got to make it sound really good and professional. Uh, our other piece is to, uh, set a schedule and stick to it. Uh, if it's once a week, like, great, stick to it every Wednesday afternoon, let's say, and that's your schedule for life. Uh, we have never missed a Tuesday or Thursday in the 12 years we've been doing it, and people count on that. Um, that's why, you know, TV stations have regular programming, because people like to know when their things coming out. So, stick, you know, think of what's reasonable for you and stick to it. And then, uh, like I said at the beginning, do something that you care about. Be yourself. Uh, hopefully, it's something you're passionate about. And that'll really, really come through. And uh, Chuck, I'll ask you to maybe, is there a, a particular episode that you're that really sticks in uh, fondness for you uh, from the podcast? I mean, like I said, uh, there's many, <laughs> many to choose from. Is there is, is there one uh, personal favorite, I guess? Go ahead, Josh. Were, were you asking me or Chuck? Oh, sorry. I meant Josh. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. So, uh, <sighs> 
So we've got, I guess, about 1,400 episodes that I don't think either <laughs> one of us have anywhere near the recollection to recall all the episodes we've done. Um, so anytime I go through uh, one of our, our fans, uh, Jill Hurley, who we call the Minister of Stats, put together a comprehensive list of every single episode we've ever released, including the date and all that stuff. So sometimes we'll just kind of scroll through that and look at what we've done. And I, I, I'm just amazed. I, I can't believe that we've made, you know, some of these episodes. And, and I'll, I'll be like, that was a really good one. I forgot about that. So I, I can't pick a, a particular one, but, you know, we typically like the ones that are um, kind of weird history. It's usually a, a good favorite, like the, the time the CIA secretly raised a Soviet sub in the 70s um, or when Nazis invaded Florida um, or when the British Secret Service used a, a corpse. Uh, they, they, they made a corpse look like a, a courier in World War II to fool the Nazis into thinking uh, the D-Day invasion wasn't coming where it was. Um, there's, you know, history is just full of stuff like that. So we're, we're always fascinated by that. And again, the, uh, the the book, Stuff You Should Know, an incomplete compendium of mostly interesting things. And uh, Josh and Chuck, it's been great to visit with you guys. I want to make sure and uh, and let our listeners know not only where to find more information about the book, but uh, but also the podcast and, and your social media as well. Uh, Chuck, I'll get with you first, I guess. Uh, well, you can find me. Uh, well, the podcast you can find anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, I also host the Movie Crush podcast where I interview people about their favorite movie. And you can find uh, Stuff You Should Know on Twitter and Facebook, obviously. Uh, I think it's Stuff You Should, S-Y-S-K podcast. And you can find me on Instagram at Chuck the Podcaster. All right. And Josh? Uh, I'm at Josh Um Clark on Twitter. There's the underscore in between Josh and Um and Um and Clark. Uh, and I believe I've got the same handle on Instagram as well. And then, yeah, check out SYSK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that. All right. Well, Josh Clark, Chuck Bryant, be sure and check out uh, the new book, Stuff You Should Know, and uh, also the podcast as well. Josh and Chuck, thank you for your time. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks for having us and welcome to podcast. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Thanks again for joining me for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question anything else you'd like to know you can find me on instagram twitter and facebook all at gq with cam if you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast go ahead and click the support tab and follow the instructions if you have a special guest idea you can email me gq with cam at gmail.com thanks again to brandon allen for coming up with the tune for gq with cam we'll let him play us out and be back with episode number 65 coming up tomorrow